God's good, amen? amen? Very nice, very nice. Well, I know we've been through this for a long while. Well, first of all, welcome to uh, the celebration of Doc Blevins Sunday. That's why we've got jerseys on today. I'm a golfer, so this is my jersey. But um, Doc was a unique individual and uh, a great gift from heaven to the earth, amen? amen. I mean, nobody, I've never met anybody like the doctor. And uh, his gift was very evident. Thank God for the literally thousands of tens of thousands of people that are, that are born again because of the ministry God put on the inside of him, and it was awesome. So at the end of service, we'll celebrate him today and, and remember, uh, thank God for him. Man, I tell, say it all the time to everybody that knew him, thank God he went when he went because he'd have never made it through this. <laughs> as much as he loves sports and and going and doing stuff, I mean, man. <clears throat> anyway, we don't have to turn there. Remember, we've been through this forever. But First, First Thessalonians chapter five: You are a spirit. You live in a body. You possess a soul. So the voice of your flesh is what? Feeling. feeling. How do you feel? The voice of your soul is what? Reason. Reason. It sounds reasonable. And the voice of your spirit is what? Conscience. Your conscience. And so I know we've been through this forever, but whenever your soul, your mind, will, and emotions is educated in the word. In other words, you get the word. Your mind's renewed to the truth. It gives your spirit voice, your consciousness, a more authoritative voice. In other words, it's easy. So why is it that we need to renew our mind? Well, it's really so that you can be more sensitive to the spirit of God. I mean, we're not reading it just so to read it. You're reading it because you're renewing your mind to the truth. I know I've said this forever, but there's a lot of ways to renew your mind. We've majored on a minor. The minor way is really to read it. The major way is to fellowship it. What do you mean, talking it with somebody or talking to God about it or meditating in it and marinating in it and going through that, and it changes your mind. And so we've got, we've got what I call three gates. We've got an eye gate, an ear gate, and a mouth gate. And really, that's the way we renew our mind. So I know I've been through this forever, but most of my life, the confession part of it, I thought moved God. And it doesn't move God. God's already moved. Because of, because of the sacrifice Jesus made, he's already, he already moved for us. Everything's already done. We've got it. He purchased everything that we would need. So your confession doesn't move God to do something. It renews your mind. So if you're saying, by a stripes I'm healed, and you think it's some magic wand, right. it's not. Oh, it got real quiet. I've already been healed. By his stripes, I'm already healed. He already purchased that for me. So it's not that. Renewing my mind is what? Reminding myself that this is what I have. So whenever I say, you know, by his stripes, I'm healed. Oh, yeah, Jesus purchased that for me. Man, I, he, 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 he paid the price for that. He, I mean, he went to hell for me, so I don't have to go there. Thank God. Amen. Come on, all the things, I'm confessing, what are you doing? You know, he meets all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Well, that's not going to cause all of a sudden money to flood into your bank account. That went over big. But it reminds me, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, my job's not my provider. This world doesn't have anything on me. My provider is him. And no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, I'll be all right. What are you doing? I'm renewing my mind. Why? So that I live out of my spirit. Well, I know we've been through this forever. We talk about growing up spiritually. It doesn't mean that your spirit grows up. Well, that went over big too. I've told you this before. We've got so many stories. But, you know, I was taught that you had to, you read the word, you feed your spirit. Well, you don't feed your spirit. You renew your mind. So my, I had this idea that my spirit was somehow shrinking. And it's not shrinking. My spirit, your spirit's connected to God. It can't shrink. So I had this other idea. I've got I to gotta feed my spirit. I've got to live out of this. And, 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 and I've got to be strong in my spirit. Your spirit's strong. You didn't get the eight pound, six ounce Jesus when you got born again. You got the full-blown resurrected at the right hand of far above all power and principality and every name that's been named. You got the name that's above every name. You've got it all. So it's living out of that. Well, I had this idea, so I've told you this before. I only got so many stories, but it messed with my religious education. 
So I went to college, and I know it doesn't seem like it, but I did, <laughs> and um, for probably, I used to say two years, but really it's probably about 18 months, I didn't do anything wrong, I just didn't do anything. Lazy. And I, I didn't really go to church, wasn't a good church there, you know, I went to a dirtbag place, and so I wanted to play sports, so that's just stupid, but anyway. I went there, and so um, the church wasn't that great, and you know, I, I found out that the dorm was really quiet on Sunday morning. I was like, this is why people don't go to church. This is awesome. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Lynn. God bless the rest of you guys. But I remember one time I woke up and I was like, man, I, I need to go. I want to go. I'm tired of this, you know, not doing, not, not doing anything wrong, just not doing anything. And I was shocked because when I went in and I, I'm sitting in church and it's like, Wow, my spirit's further than I thought. In other words, I could feel like it didn't take a break. Yeah. I didn't know much, but I knew enough to know what was spiritual and what and what in a little bit. And I was like, wow, nothing's changed here. It's changed here. But nothing's changed here. And it messed with my religious education. Like, wait a minute. I thought that I had to feed my spirit. My spirit's still good. Yeah. I know things that I shouldn't know by the Holy Ghost. How's this working? And, you know, I kind of blew it off and still went back into the deal. Well, you know, every time you eat, you got to open the Word because you fed your flesh. You better feed your spirit. No, you need to renew your mind. But you're not feeding. What's your point? My spirit, your spirit's connected to God. It never shrinks. It never draws back. It never gets, it never gets defeated. It's always, always, always alive. Yes. So renewing your mind starts, oh, wait a minute. Now it agrees with what's on the inside of me. Amen. Good news, not bad news. So now it's not that I got to feed that. I got to start this so that I'm more sensitive. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Well, I used to think, well, you just got to pray in the Holy Ghost just because. No, the word says that you edify yourself. Well, that's good. That means you build yourself up. You build a fortress around you. That's good. Oh, that's awesome. But the other part of that is it makes you sensitive to the spirit that's on the inside of you. You know, when I'm praying in an unknown tongue, I don't speak to men, but to God, secrets or mysteries are things I don't know. But also, when I'm praying that way, it makes me very sensitive. Wait a minute. I'm praying by the Spirit of God. He's using this temple. He's using my mouth. He's using what I have to proclaim in the earth. So I'm praying this out. I'm praying not just for whatever I'm praying for, but it's coming up out of my spirit connected to him. I'm yielding to his spirit in me. And it makes me more sensitive. But while I'm on that, you know, we've been through this before, but the, the closer you get to God, the more emotional you'll be. Yeah. I didn't think that. I always thought that, you know, my whole idea, what people told me, and again, this is a religious education deal. People loved me. They just wanted to, and they were trying to help me. But I had this idea that, you know, God's not moved by your circumstance. He's moved by your faith. So now I got this picture that God just sits up there, well, you're not using your faith, you're out. I don't have this picture of a loving God. I've got a picture of a God that says, you better do it this way and you better jump through the hoop this way or no bueno. Right? That ain't working. I didn't know that I had a father that loved me so much that if I even thought about it, he was going to go ahead of it. He knew what I had need of before I ever asked. Old Testament had to ask. New covenant, I don't even have to ask. He shows up. Come on, man. I've got stuff that God said, I thought you'd like that. And I did. And didn't even know that I did. He's always ahead of you. He's, he's doing every. His love is always in pursuit of you. And it never stops. So I had this whole idea that, you know, this was God. And then I found out that all my emotions by my spirit were good. Jesus was moved with compassion. We have an advocate with a father, a high priest, who's sympathetic to our weakness because he went through it. And all these things. And so I would look at all the emotions. I've been through this before, but all my emotions in the flesh are wrong, but all my emotions in the spirit are right. You shouldn't hate, but the word says God hates sin. You shouldn't be jealous, but the word says God is jealous for us. Come on. See, it's a spiritual deal. You shouldn't ever covenant. Yes, the word says to covet the best gifts. See, all your emotions spiritually are awesome. It's your flesh that messes it up. <laughs> so I found out the closer I got to the Father, 
the more emotional I became. The more the presence of God, wow, the more I would feel certain things. Come on. That I didn't feel before. The more I would see certain things and it would trigger something on the inside of me, moved with compassion. You have a compassionate father. You have a God that thinks nothing but good things about you. And he's doing nothing but showering you with good things. And he's always on your side. And he's always, always, always doing everything on your behalf. Not judging anymore, not taking all that. See, when you know that, it's easy to trust somebody like that. Hard to trust, hard for me to trust a God that was always, I was always under the microscope. Thank God Jesus went under the microscope. And thank God every time the Father looks at me, he sees that same thing he saw in Jesus. Thank God I've been recreated in him. Killed the old man, resurrected a brand new man in his likeness and image. So when God looks at you, he looks like he's looking at Jesus. When he looks at you, he's looking at himself. He sees the perfect, the finished perfect work of God in you. Sees you through the blood. Come on, man. So you don't have to grow up spiritually. We just got to learn how to live out of our spirit more than we do our flesh and our soul. You guys still here? You don't have to turn there. I know it's all review, but we'll go through it real quick. Talked about the fact last time how Jesus, uh, you know, he developed in wisdom and stature. In other words, he started to learn this. So there's a part of this where the word read the word yeah. and found out who he was. Right. Same thing with you. When you get into the word, you're in the word. You start to find out what, what does God say about you? Yeah. What does he think about you? Yeah. And I found out that most of my life, my relationship with God, again, was based on what people told me, so that always went through the one filter of all this religious stuff that I had. Right. And I've told you this and told you this and told you this and told you this, but I, I finally, one day, the Lord spoke to me and said, any revelation you have that doesn't involve you being righteous is tainted. In other words, you put your own spin to it. So every time I would read something before, I'd look at it, think, oh, then I got to do this and this and this and this and this. You ever heard this one? Because, you know, they always use it out of um, John chapter 15. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask whatever you want and you'll have it. Well, they said, well, there's an if. That's a conditional promise. Well, that was poor the death, burial, and resurrection. So now there's no condition. There's, only, I, I, whoa, whoa, there's one condition. You've got to be born again. Come on, man. Once you're born again, you think he's going to leave you? He can't leave you. Come on, man. You continue. You live in him. Ask whatever you want in my name and I'll give it to you. But now there's no more conditions. The condition was met in Jesus. So when you got born again, you asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. You met the condition. All my promises in God. Watch this. All my promises are yes and amen in him. Conditions have been met, darling. We don't have to meet him anymore. We don't have to work it up. We don't have to say, well, am I doing this or doing that? Oh, if you believe in no doubt, you've become a believer. That's what they call us. So now it's not about me. It's about what he's already done and living out of that. So any revelation you have that you're not right, you put a spin on it. Thank you, Jamie. God bless the rest of it. So we went through 1 John and we went through the whole thing, the progression of how John's teaching and he's saying there's forgiveness for sin when you fail, 1 John 1, 9, and if, you're, if you miss the mark, you have an advocate with the Father. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, which is a great thing. Great thing. We know that we have an advocate, Jesus, at the right hand of the Father. The Word says that the, the enemy, the devil, comes daily accusing us. But yet it's a, it's a court case. We've got Jesus standing or sitting right there. And he said, the blood on the mercy seat, that's enough right there. He says, scars on my hands, scars on my back. Anytime he presents anything against you, and God says, case closed. Why? Because we got an advocate. we got somebody right there going, no, 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 no. That's one of ours. And if it's one of ours, you can't bring anything up against him because I already defeated that. So it made us right. No matter what you've done in your flesh, you're still right with God. So he's saying, listen, listen, listen. If you screw up, just say it. All right, I screwed up. But he wants to progress. Wait a minute, now, and if you do, remember this. you got somebody at the right hand of the Father going to bat for you. Right. And then he says, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 12, he says that your sins are forgiven for God's sake. Right. So now he's making a point. Listen, he didn't just do that for you. He did it for him. 
Jesus came and, the, and, the, and gave up all his deity and came as a man. Why? So that he could get us, get us all back. Why did he do it? So that God could live in us. Why did God want to live in us? He didn't want to just show up every once in a while. He wanted to never leave us. He wanted us to be alive to him. He wanted to talk to us all the time. You were created for fellowship. He couldn't live in something that was sinful. So he said, I got to take care of the sin problem so I can live in him. And he did. So it's not just you that he did it for. He did it for himself so he can live in you. You guys still here? And then 1 John chapter 2, verse 28 that we'd have confidence and not be ashamed in him because what, when he comes back, we'll see, we're just the same. 1 John chapter 3, verse 7. Let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is just as righteous as he is. And I thought that was my lifestyle. Wait a minute. It's a lot more than that. Remember over in Romans chapter 5, verse 17, that we, we rule and reign from this what? Gift of righteousness in this life. Romans. That's where I want to get to. That's where we're going. So we've been in Romans for a long time. Yeah, we have. I like Romans chapter 8. Now, we're going to get to some stuff today, but I'll start, I always start with verse 1 because I like it. There is therefore now no, zero, zilch, nada, condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life, thank God for the law of the Spirit of life, has made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Now, whenever, most of my life, I looked at it, and we'll get to this in a second, but I looked at it, well, there's still all these things I have to do. Man, all you got to do is live. Come on. All you have to do is get born again, you're in. All you have to, now listen, I had a really good friend when I was growing up, and he said something to me, and it stuck. You know how certain things stick in your brain? And most of the stuff that sticks in my brain is really stupid. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember. Like, why well, didn't all the, this stick in there? But anyway. But he said something one time, and it, it just stuck in there. He's like, if this is such a great relationship with God, and he's born again. He's just being honest. He said, you know, we were talking one time, and he just said, how come I do all the talking? And I don't hear nothing. And I thought, wow, he's got a point there, you know? And then within the same conversation, maybe within the few years, it was like, man, it's not really fair. I mean, we live this way. We don't do anything. And somebody else just lives however they want to live. And at the end, they get born again and they get in. <laughs> got a point there, too. I got saved when I was eight. I never got to build a testimony. Right. <laughs> you know, you go someplace when you're a kid and they have an FCA meeting or something, and some guy talk about all the stuff that happens, all the bad stuff happens in life, and he got saved and how great it is. Right. You know, and then you get up and go, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I just, I got saved when I was eight. I got delivered from, you know, chocolate milk. I mean, whatever. <laughs> you know, what are you doing? And I remember, so those things, they stuck in there. So I remember one time just talking to the Lord years and years later on the first one. He said, I've never been quiet with you. I've never shut up. That's right. I'm always talking to you. I made you to talk to. Right. You haven't listened right. or you haven't heard me, right. but I've never been quiet. Started bringing stuff back. I tried to get my attention here and here and here and here and here and here and here. Wow. And then it was like, wow, if I'm not hearing, it's because I'm not tuning in. Right. The Bible says when you fast, not if you fast. Well, that's not, you're not getting more anointed. I thought you did. You know, I go somewhere and preach, wouldn't eat for three days. And then I found out that was stupid. Right? You know, good heart, stupid head. And then I was like, oh, I heard a guy say, well, I'll tell you what, you, you fast, I'll eat a steak, we'll see who's more anointed. I thought, I like your doctrine a lot better, because I love beef. Anyway, unless, well, anyway, I won't go there. Flank steak, whoever came over that? That's not, that's not even real. Anyway, it's too chewy. Anyway, you guys out there. So that stuck in my brain. I was like, man, God's never been quiet with me. You know, fasting is not just food. You understand that. He can, he's going to, we'll get to this hopefully today, but he'll lead you into certain things and just, that's not, you need to fast that because that's, that's, that's not, that's, that's covering something you don't need, you don't need. It's not fit for you. It's not good for you. 
You need, to t- you need to set that down for a while. You need to set that. It's not that it's a rule and regulation. He's causing you to live in him and be more sensitive to him, hearing from him. Amen. So then the other one, man, all these people. And I remember I was asking the Lord, those two things are from the same guy. Those two things kind of stuck in me. And I, I'll never forget where I was at and where I was sitting. And I, I was sitting at my de- desk. We didn't have kids yet. And I was just like, Lord, you know, kind of what about that? I mean, he's kind of got a point. Man, the answer I got was awesome. He said, when you get here, you'll meet all these people that just got in. They live their whole life. And they would give everything they had on the earth to live one day in my presence on the earth. You don't know what we got. Religion's ripped us off. We don't know the greatness of who he is in us. We don't know how wonderful this life is in him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't smell like smoke. They wouldn't bow. They wouldn't give in. They said, let's make it seven times hotter. What the world is right now is seven times hotter. We don't smell like smoke. We smell like the presence of God. We are the fragrance of heaven. When you know who your God is, when you know how great your Father is, you don't smell like the rest of the world. (laughs) said, you wouldn't believe how they would just give up all of that for a day in my presence on the earth. Changed me. Now I'm thankful. Thankful. Thankful that I got God. Thankful that He's my dad. Thankful that He leads me and guides me. Thankful, thankful, thankful that I hear His voice. Thankful that everything that I do is anointed by Him. Mm. For the law of the Spirit of life. Thank God for life. He's given us a life. In Christ Jesus made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh. In other words, your flesh had to do it. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. And he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So then somebody come in and go, well, you got to walk in the spirit. Well, you skip on through the whole thing. Well, we'll keep reading because I like it, but. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded or fleshly minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I don't know about you, but I like living. And I love peace. That doesn't mean you're on a boat somewhere, you know, on a gentle day in a sailboat eating grapes. What it means is (laughs) that nothing's broken, nothing's missing. That you've got a wholeness in God. Everything in the world can be going crazy, but you're just I feel good because I know I'm not going to smell like them. I've told you this before. I worked at a place. We worked at La Fortune Park. Like we called it La Torture Park, but anyway. (laughs) And there was five assistant pros there, and we all had to wear the same thing. In other words, one day was this slack, one day was this shirt, one day was this. So we all dressed the same. And I was maybe the bigger slob of anybody that's possibly ever walked. I'll tell a story about Doc later, but. He was close. <laughs> and so this lady came in one time, and she said, you know, I like you more than the rest of them. They're all, we're all standing there. He said, she said, you're cleaner than they are. And I'm like, I got 100 pair of underwear at home because I don't do laundry. I just keep buying more. <laughs> but whatever. And I turned around. So I thanks, you know, whatever. I turned around. She was quite a bit older. I turned around and the Lord said, she's not talking about you. She's talking about me. I was the only one saved there. Only one out of the five born again. That lady didn't know come here from Gideon, but she knew, hey, there's something clean about that guy. Why? Wouldn't do anything. Living out of here. Best I could. I'm still pretty religious, but you know, whatever. <laughs> For to be carly minded or fleshly minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because a carnal mind and a flesh mind is at war against God. For it's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, in other words, you're born again. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of God, he's not of his. And Christ, watch this, and if Christ is in you, 
the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life is life because of what? Righteousness. Come on, man. Your spirit's alive to God. Your spirit's right with God. Your spirit's the same as God. Come on. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being the form of God, didn't consider it robbery to be what? Equal with God. He's not talking about his flesh. He's talking about his spirit. So you're 100% God in your spirit. 100%, not 98, not 50, you are. And that's who you are. You are a spirit. Your spirit's right. When you live out of your spirit, your flesh winds up getting right. Exactly. Not the other way around. I'll show you here in just a second. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, and he does, who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. There's a lot of ways we can go with that. Verse 12, because you can cause it, you know, like this. If I got something wrong with my body, I always say this. Man, my spirit lives in here. My spirit's right, and my spirit makes alive my body. So I command my spirit, my hand, to make that hand perfect. I demand that my spirit take charge over my flesh. Flesh, you're going to give in to my spirit, because my spirit's been made perfect. So I can use it for healing. I can use it for, uh, there's a lot of different avenues there. You can use it, well, that same life that lives in me, raised Christ Jesus from the dead, now lives and dwells on the inside of me, gives life to my mortal flesh, also gives, radiates out of me. And everywhere I go, he goes. Just like Peter had a revelation that wherever he goes, God goes, his shadow went across people, got people born again. You talk about radiating some life out of you. Not, not that, oh, well, they had great faith. They rolled up. No, 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 no. He knew who, what he had. How come? How come Paul and Silas at midnight sang hymns and psalms to God? And the whole, all the prisoners heard them, and the ground shook. Well, God just showed up because they sang good? <laughs> no, because they let who was on the inside of them out. Yeah. Because of the God that was on the inside of them. How about Acts chapter 4? They went to their own companions, told them all the threats of the chief priests and elders. They said with one accord they lifted their voice to heaven. Said at the end of that thing when they got through praying, what, the ground shook. You think God said, you know, that's a good prayer. Let's shake the ground. No, they let the God that was on the inside of them out. So you've got a spirit on the inside of you that makes alive your body, but it also radiates out of you. Out of your belly should flow rivers, not a river, not a stream, not a creek, but many rivers. That's a bunch of stuff. It changes every situation you walk into. It goes ahead of you. It stays behind you. Good news, not bad news. So there's a lot of ways we can go with that. That's not where I'm preaching on. Verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are what? Debtors, not to the flesh to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you'll die. He's not talking about you're going to die immediately. He's talking about you'll get certain things cut off from you. You'll lose feeling in some areas that you should have feeling in. Come on. You ever met somebody that really needs to, you really need to love on? They're hard to love on. Right? Because something's, something's turned them that way. Anyway, I won't go down that road. You know, marriage is a lot better at this than I am. Because, you know, when we first got married, I told you this before, but, you know, I'd look at somebody, it's just easier for me to say, they're an idiot. <laughs> well, they're not really. Something's happened to make them. I'm like, that takes a lot of thinking. I just say they're an idiot. Move on. Turn the page. But she would look at it. Well, how does God? She saw it, and it took a long time. But it rubbed off on me. I'm like, well, that guy's an idiot. But why? I mean, I don't know what happened to him to make him an idiot. I mean, I'm still not saying he's not. I haven't got to that point yet. I still got my judgment deal going. Eh. You know a tree by its fruit. Idiot fruit. But I have come this far. Well, wait a minute, something's, something's going on there that made him that way. You don't come out of the box that way. Come on, there's, there's, there's something there. And so then you start seeing him with the compassion of God. Wow, something's, something's corrupt you, something's hardened you, something's tainted you, something's made you that way. You guys still here? So it's not that you die. I mean, to live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you'll what? Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you'll live. Wow. I know I've preached on this before, but boy, most of my life I had that backwards. I thought if I can put to death the deeds of the flesh by the flesh, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this, and I was real regimented. Well, then, 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 then I would hear from God. Then I would flow in God. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. You don't have to get your ducks in a row. You start listening to the Holy Ghost. You start watching the very next verse. Watch this. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. Yeah. Wait a minute. So whenever I start getting led by the Spirit of God, it's taking me a place where the stuff of my flesh starts to fall off. Yeah. I start to see him for who he is. I start to see myself for who I am in him. And when that happens, it changes everything. Now I'm not looking anymore to where I got to get right. I've been made right. And I start living out of that rightness. All this, all this stuff starts to fall off. Yeah. You know, I was going somewhere one time. And, you know, when you go somewhere and you know what you're doing, and you know, you know, and, the, and there's, I always say this, there's, there's two ways boldness is acquired. One way is in knowledge. Right. When you know something, I know that. And so I got a boldness in that because of the knowledge I have in it. And then the other one's the spiritual boldness. Well, that's a lot better. But when you're going somewhere in the natural and you don't know anything about it, you're going to learn, but you don't know anything about it, you have, your flesh gets insecure. And I'm not the guy. Do you guys ever see Fletch? A great movie. If you haven't seen. Anyway, and he goes, he needs some heavyweight oil and some ball bearings. Or ball bearings? He goes, yeah, it's all ball bearings. He, you know, he's just faking it. Anyway, if you had to see the movie, then it didn't make any sense. And obviously the ones that saw it didn't get it. But <laughs> I'm not going to fake it. I'm not that guy that just sits there and nods and goes, uh -huh, uh -huh, like, you know what you're talking about, whatever. And I remember, so I'm going, so my flesh is a little insecure. And I remember on the inside of me, why would you be insecure? You're going to learn. Just go in and be honest. I don't know. That's why I'm coming here. That's why I want to know. Come in and just, I, I don't know anything. And he said, even when you know stuff, if you'll come in with that attitude, let me teach you. Oh. Then I found out what I used to have boldness is because of my knowledge, I, was, I started hearing different. Yeah. You might get something out of this. Should. You might get something out of that. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He said, you know, your insecurity is your flesh. Your spirit's not insecure. Right. No. So I walked in there and thought, man, you guys are going to be blessed because of the God that's on the inside of me. That's not pride in me. That's pride in him. That's not talking about how, how I am. I'm talking about how he is. Because he's on the inside of me, you know what? I'm going to rub off on you. He's going to rub off on you. And it's going to be a sweet smelling aroma. I'm going to smell like, I'm going to smell like heaven. Well, three of you, God bless. Thanks, Jojo. For you did not, watch this. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, uh-oh, but received the spirit of adoption, whom we cry out, Abba, Father. You didn't receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. So in the, over in Proverbs, he said, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. That word issue means borders or fences. So things have happened in your life, and you built a fence. You said something, you were transparent with somebody, and they came in and they hammered you. And because they did that, you built a fence. Not doing that again. Wait a minute, why? Because of fear. You're afraid somebody else is going to do the same thing to you. I took this job, didn't want this job. I remember August 8th, the year 2000, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 6701 South Oak Avenue. God said, I want you to pastor. No, thank you. Three months, every time I get up and start to shave. Hey, Pastor Freeman, shut up. We had an argument for three months because I knew the job and I knew what it entailed. I've been in church all my life. I'll leave Oklahoma. Don't make me do that. <laughs> Greatest thing ever happened to me. But the part I didn't like didn't go away. Just because he said, do it the way I called you to do it. Don't do it like anybody else. The part I didn't like, you pour out your heart, you give all you got. They kick you in the groin and leave. Don't, I don't want to do that. Well, wait a minute. 
if I told you to do it, would you do it again? Yeah, I would. Well, then why are you doing it? Are you doing it for them? Are you doing it because you're doing it for them so they'll think you're a good guy? Or are you doing it because I ask you to do it? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, that's a different deal now. Kick me in the groin and leave. All right, fine. Change is everything. Change is everything. See, now but we guard our heart. So you got to guard your heart. Why do I guard my heart? Everybody's got a different heart issue. So you don't go certain places and do certain things and you're not transparent the way you should be or you're not raw the way you should be because somebody's going to judge you. He's taking your judgment. At the same time, i got to watch, you know, what do, I, what, do I, what do I feed myself? Do I feed myself all the stuff that the world says or do I feed myself what he says? Do I, do I dwell on all the situations in the world? Because it's not ever going to get any better. It's always been bad. Or do I, do I feed myself with the Word? Feed myself in His presence. Feed myself so that I what? I, I, I start removing those boundaries because all bondage is is fear. He doesn't want you to go into any kind of, I didn't do certain things in my life because I thought God would kill me. And I didn't want to disappoint my grandma. And really it was my grandma before God at the time. She was awesome. But it was fear-based. So it didn't have any life to it. So you could say, I've said this forever. If you're, you know, if you know somebody that's, you know, I look at the Mormons sometimes and go, man, those suckers. They do a better job, you know, morally and all that than we do. I mean, they're not married, you know, they can't have like 50 wives anymore. Nobody can afford it. I think that's probably still what they're doing. But, <laughs> but there's no life in it. Come on, man, there's no life. Man, our life, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flow the issues or the borders in your life. Man, God, you're right with God. When you start living out of your spirit, you're, he starts knocking fences down. You know, I remember, um, turn with me to 1 John chapter 4. Last thing we got to go. But when we moved into the house we live in and, and, and we got a rock fireplace. It goes all the way to the ceiling way up there. We just got there, and the jakester, I don't know, it was seven or five or four, I don't know how old it was, whatever. He climbed to the top of that thing. So I started to say, hey, you can fall over and break your neck, because that's what I would have heard, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I started to say, hey, and the Lord said, don't put your fear on him. I say, boy, yeah, come hither. <laughs> don't climb the deal. Huh? Just don't climb it. It's the law. Okay? <laughs> Pulled the hat down and tried to tick. Said you feel esteem when he left. But anyway. <laughs> but I want to put a border there from fear. You guys still here? 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. Love, thank God for God's love, has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Watch this, verse 18. For, well, watch this. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves what? Torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. What's he saying? He's saying you haven't let the love of God pour out of you. We think that's to other people. That's also to you first. Yes, it is. Any bondage, anything you're doing that causes a fear, God doesn't want it. Come on. Good. And anything you're doing, I'm not doing this. Not, no, wait a minute. Out of my love relationship, there's boundaries. And those boundaries, because I'm in love. I do certain things I normally wouldn't do. And I do things that it constrains me from doing things that I want to do. What do you mean, my flesh? But it's not because I can't. It's because it's a better way. And I see the love part of it that draws me a better way. So everything that's in bondage involves fear. And perfect love casts out all fear. Close your eyes, bow your heads. Nobody looking around. If you're here this morning, never given your life to Jesus, today's your day. Maybe you're here this morning and 
you're born again, just haven't been hanging out with God.